Okay, this is video number three. Uh, you remember that uh, we kind of left off with um, calculating uh, the volume of gases, and uh, there's an easy way to recognize these problems. Um, this 22.4 liters per mole um, only works, again, if it's at STP. So if you can look for that STP, if it doesn't say it, you can't use it. So uh, check with me if you think uh, it should have STP in there, but there's some times where we're going to use densities where we can convert a mass to volume. Density equals mass per unit volume. So we're going to kind of throw those into the worksheet, kind of uh, combine that with with the lab that we did and some of the stuff you picked up in chapter two. So uh, you look for those STP. I miss it so much. I love that bike. I used to take that bike everywhere. And someone stole it. Did I tell you that in the last lecture? I did. Sorry about the breakdown. I'm over. I recovered. I can't believe they're still making it. It's a beauty. All right. So what does STP stand for? It's not um, the uh, uh, car product that uh, the sticker uh, recommends that they put on uh, racing cars. And, um, it stands for standard temperature and pressure. Um, so uh, gases will change based on the pressure. You put more pressure on them, they get smaller. Uh, if you heat them up, they get bigger. Um, so uh, those things will have an effect. Um, uh, we're going to do uh, finish stoichiometry up after this next test with some stoichiometry problems. And then uh, our next law, we'll do a lot with uh, gases uh, and gas laws, something that we cover uh, in pretty good detail in this class. All right, so here's, here's your problem. And again, make sure your notes have uh, everything, including, you know, the, the problems themselves. So this one, uh, the question is being asked, how many moles are in 53,210 milliliters of C3H8, which happens to be propane, um, gas at STP? All right, so you see the STP, therefore we get to use that magic 22.4 liters per mole if we need it. Um, and uh, that makes for an easy conversion. You just got to turn the milliliters into liters. Um, and uh, hopefully you remember how to do that. So with this one, I'd like you to hit the pause. And then I'm just going to post the whole answer up. And then I'll explain some things uh, that will hopefully, hopefully address any questions or problems you had in trying this okay so um remember they're easy to start so uh give this one a try hit the pause all right welcome back let's see how you did uh you have to put the 53 210 milliliter milliliters down here will cancel out there is 1000 milliliters in one liter uh, people sometimes will get that mixed up but make sure you know what these are um, you know, a milliliter is a cubic centimeter, which is about like if you, you snapped off the top of your little pinky finger, uh, that would be a milliliter of volume. Uh, uh, and then put it back on by all means. You know, uh, need to leave that off of there. Um, so um, that would be a cubic centimeter, which is the same thing as a milliliter. And uh, uh, that conversion uh, can be used uh, to get that into liters and once you're into liters you're at STP so yeah you can make that statement 22.4 liters in one mole you see how nice dimensional analysis is you don't have to remember well, do I multiply by 22.4 yeah sometimes do I divide well in this case you do so here what you're going to do is you're going to take this number and then you're going to divide it by this. Um, this is really important. A lot of people will make this mistake of doing this in their calculator. They'll take 53,000 divided by a 1,000 and then times 22.4.
Well, your calculator, as soon as you go times, it thinks it's on the, the top. Uh, and unless you use a parenthesis key, uh, it's going to mess up the order of operations there. And so what you want to do, that I think this is the easiest way. So if you have your calculator out, if you go 53.210 divided by 1,000, enter. And then what are you doing on the next one? Oh, divided by 22.4, enter. And then you uh, will end up getting this number. And uh, again, uh, your calculator is going to disagree with you a little bit in terms of sig figs. Why did I go to three sig figs on this one? Because this is four. If you look at this, this last zero is not significant, but those four are. Now, so for big numbers, that trailing zero is not significant. You want to keep reminding yourself of, of some of those rules. So I'm trying to give you some examples to help you refresh um, and, and really, in, in some cases, maybe you didn't quite get it down. So that's okay. We're going we're gonna to cover that with, with these example problems that we do. But remember, don't let your answer vary at all from the answers that we have here. So that is the uh, one true answer for this problem is 2.38 moles because of the three sig figs in 22.4. Remember, uh, it's never going to be one sig fig. Just you can put that to rest. Um, it's going to be two, mostly three, sometimes four. Uh, <laughs> those are the numbers that, that we work with. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, that's uh, using that uh, 22.4 at STP. Um, so uh, this next one, I want you to write and then just go ahead and, and copy uh, the answer down. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can try. Uh, just write it down and give it a try. But um, with this particular one, it's it's sort of a, a new concept, and there's a couple of brand new things uh, on here that uh, I, I don't want you to get confused about. So I went right to the answer on this problem. So hit the pause, get that all written down um, so that I can explain this sort of step by step and, and and then you'll get to practice some on your worksheet like this so pause all right welcome back again there's only one number so starting these things is usually very simple sometimes they'll have some extra information uh, that you didn't need um, and uh, so the, the first thing that's a little tricky about this one is it goes back to uh, topic one, where we have uh, a mass amount. Well, trust your instincts. You know how to convert grams to moles. So let's give that a try. And uh, this is just looking up the atomic weight of um, uh, Krypton. 83.8 grams in one mole. And then you make your next set of parentheses because we're not what we need to. We said we wanted to go to liters. So then the mole now goes on the bottom here. And nothing changed. Gram to gram, mole to mole. We do that every time we do a factor label or dimensional analysis. So that was the case here as well. So uh, when you do that, um, the uh, uh, units again will cancel out right there. And then the moles will cancel out. And you'll end up with liters because it was at STP. Now, one of the things to note here is I didn't say gas. Uh, I think a good uh, chemist should know that Krypton is a gas at room temperature. And remember, you have your periodic table. So the ones that I'll throw at you are usually elements so that you can look up. Uh, I wouldn't expect you to know, um, you know, if um, uh, heptane was a gas or a liquid. Uh, as a matter of fact, it kind of bounces back and forth between both. So, uh, but in this case, you should know Krypton is a gas. Now, notice, when we did this, you're going to go to two sig figs, it's 20 liters. So if you wrote 20 liters, that's a pretty darn good answer, but I'm going to put a check mark and I'm going to say significant figures are wrong. 
because we just finished saying in the previous one that for numbers um, you know bigger than one that leading zero is not significant but yet the answer is 20 so how do we do that enter our good friend scientific notation 2.0 times 10 to the first now look that zero is on the right side of the decimal and that's the difference if this if we wanted to show 20 in scientific notation it would be 2 times 10 to the first and it would be one significant figure but if we put that zero there the only reason it's there you don't need it for any mathematical purposes the only reason it's there is for uh, making it significant showing that this is exactly spot on 20 so 2.0 times 10 to the first liters okay all right uh, the last part We'll go over this pretty quickly and let you do most of this through practice. Um, but when you're counting particles, there are really four different, only four different things. We're not going to do basketballs. We're not going to do money. You saw that those things are almost ridiculously large. So we're going to do atoms. That's when they're by themselves. Ions, when they have a charged particle. Monatomic and polyatomic. Formula units. These are... Uh, ionically bonded substances okay and we're gonna go pretty fast here so hit the pause if you need to and molecules covalently bonded uh, things like that we've worked with so much methane water co2 um, we would talk about molecules basically it's the same concept it's just the number of particles you'll have that many of each of these particles um, in a mole. Now, in brackets here, I put acceptable abbreviation. Don't make up your own abbreviations. I won't know what that means. Don't put FU. Uh, for some reason, I find that offensive when students do that. So you don't get to make up your own. Um, in, in this one, you can't just say MOL because that's mole. Um, MOLE is mole, so you have to go all the way out to the C and do MOLEC. All right. So, um, here is a problem where you have a whole bunch of molecules, and that should be the case. If you're counting molecules or ions or atoms or formula units, it's going to be a really big number, and that's the case here. So you have ammonia, extraneous information. You don't even need it because we're just counting. In this case, it tells you that we're uh, counting a molecule um, that's covalently bonded. Um, so there's this many molecules and we know that one mole has this many molecules and that turns out to be a hundred and fifty moles that has two sig figs that zero is not significant we should have two sig figs excellent now this is where you're going to have to do some practice on your own find on your calculator a special key for doing base 10 times 10 to the 24th and most calculators that is the e e key all right um and uh that will help you so do do a little bit of research on that um look for some videos how do i do e e on my calculator i'll walk you through it just real quick uh, on mine uh there's it's the second function and this is uh, the TI calculator, so it has a lot of them. So I would type in 9.3 second function EE and then 25. Notice I don't hit times, I don't hit 10. I go 9.3 second function EE 25 divided by 6.02 second function EE 23. And then you hit the equal key and you should get 150. Um, you're going to have a, a couple of those to practice. Uh, and uh, just uh, search up YouTube. There's some good videos there that will uh, walk you through some practice on using your calculator. Or just kind of uh, figure it out. You should be able to. Uh, I don't think I've... Uh, very rarely there'll be someone who has like a business calculator or something that doesn't work real well. But you should be in pretty good shape. And you are now trained to do uh, the, the worksheet uh, tomorrow.
and get ready for the test.